The Greek government has declared a severe fire risk in almost half of its landmass. British holidaymakers on the Isle of Rhodes continue to flee the hellish conditions that the wildfires have caused. But, spoiler alert, the Rhodes Fire Department has admitted the fires, quote, were started by human hands. So, if arsonists were responsible, why is the doom-mongering media constantly overhyping the so-called climate crisis angle on this? Alex, I'm going to start with you. Fascinating when you look into the history yeah. of Greek fires. Every single fire from 2007, arson, 2009, arson, 2012, arson, 2018, arson, you get the picture. This year, the same again. So these are crimes started by human hands um, that happen routinely. And yet, why do we have this constant narrative of talking up the end of the world as we know it through climate change? Well, it certainly suits the current narrative, which largely goes unchallenged, to say this is because of that. Whereas actually, as the Greeks are telling us themselves, and God, you've got to feel for the landowners, the people whose properties are threatened by this, people whose lives are threatened uh, by this. The Greeks are telling us that it is a case of arson, at least this most recent one. Clearly, the Rhodes Fire Department reporting in that far-right conspiracy theory-minded uh, newspaper, The Mirror, yeah. uh, which I'm looking at, uh, r reports that the Rhodes Fire Department says that the, the heat wave is down um, to being started by people. Um, uh, more broadly, though, if let's, let's broaden it out. The the European Forest Fire Information Service, which um, publishes regular and, by, and politically neutral, obviously, data, says that fires are no worse this year than in past years. So, you know, you, you might be fooled if you're watching the news into thinking this is some extraordinary year of difference. Actually, on the, on the data, it's not. But on the longer term and global basis, I looked at some data from the Royal Society, uh, which, which showed that from the year 2000 onwards, Fires globally are down in terms of the footprint they cover um, globally by about a quarter. So whilst the narrative people might wish to pursue is that the world is on fire, it seems the data suggests that's not the case. Mr Schneider, I can hear you hear great in your teeth there. Um, there is some merit there, isn't there? The facts are the facts. You know, the, 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 the media likes to propagate the narrative the world is burning because it's, it's, it's the kind of it's the topic du jour, but the data is the data. This is, st this is started by humans. Well, the fire department said that fires are set by human hands in general terms and they're going to investigate. And, of course, the impact of having day after day, almost week after week of over 40 degrees temperatures and the way the winds are going in a particular way to expand that fire, of course, should be looked into. But it seems to me on the face of it, the fact that they're having 40 degree heat waves that last much longer than they do beforehand seems odd tied to climate change. But going to the larger issue, are we over-focusing on the climate crisis? No, we are hugely under-focusing on the climate crisis. How can you but say that? when it, let me, we ever talk about it as a climate crisis? Well, you know, if only it, if only it were. Let me lay out a, a few things. So, at the moment, there is the heat wave in Europe, the simultaneous drought. There's one here. Well, I, I know, because we're not in that weather system, but that's how weather systems work. But in Europe... There is. In China, there's a record-breaking drought. In the US, they, uh, they've had that. They've had almost wet bulb temperatures in South Asia. And this follows the same thing happening last year, where the Yangtze River in China, for example, uh, dried up in places. We had the same thing in Germany. It damaged trade when the, the Rhine uh, was, was too small. Uh, the temperature in the North Atlantic... Every single day since the 1st of April this year has been the highest it has ever been on record. And it is, go well. just hold, and it is going up. The, the impact of these things cumulatively on our lives is already big okay. and is potentially, and is, and is potentially let, let much to... more dramatic. And if you look at, if you, if you, if you Alex, look at, not the doomsday yeah. stuff, if you look at the direction of travel of where the well, science well, is hang going... Well, on, hang on, OK, let, 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 Alex, let, let, Alex, what the let Alex get a word in now, because, sure. look, look the, the fact of the matter is, people like you are called climate change deniers. None of us... Um, you know, we, we all know that the climate has always changed. Isn't it that just what's happening? No, I, I believe that the climate is changing, and I believe that man affects um, the, the climate in the way that it changes. And, indeed, climate change may make fire more likely in certain places and at certain times, which was your point about... Um, heat making it more likely that this um, takes place but what we are um, we're seeing w with this uh, at least this story about fires in Greece is that we're not actually having more fires globally 
or in Europe uh, than we have done historically. Certainly that study I mentioned from the Royal Society um, papers, two, since 2000, that's good data. It's 23 years' worth of data which suggests the number of, of fires we have or the amount of fire we have in, in the world has gone down in forest fires. Um, and, of course, is to you at least as much on this data from arson as anything else. So if I, I go from the, the broad data to the specific, before we were on air, um, Nana had a, um, an interview with, with about as grounded a, 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 an interviewee as you can find. It was a volunteer Greek firefighter who, you know, he's a guy who's gone out from Rose, gone out from his, his town to try and help them put out the fires. He said, I can see the propane bottles that people were um, use, using, whether it was for barbecues or more sinister um, outcomes, yeah. were using in the forest that started the fires that I'm trying to put out. And it's worth bringing at this point some of the historic um, fires that were started by human hands in Greece, including 20. 18, they were started in 2021, beg your pardon, they were started deliberately as an organised criminal activity. There's huge allegations uh, of, listen, of corruption at a governmental level. And another thing is that perhaps you, nobody gets penalised or prosecuted for uh, arson and, in Greece. And it's and like 2.8%. Uh, Surely we should, should. Be, we should be getting tougher on arson but, rather than but, pretending but, it's the climate change. Uh, OK, but no one is suggesting that if someone starts a fire that they shouldn't be prosecuted. Of course that's the case. This, it, the, the, and the Greek authorities aren't saying that. They're saying that we'll have an investigation and um, investigations in full swing and we'll make announcements. But I've just said that but, every, but, every fire in living memory fine, is an act but, of arson. But if you're trying to use the fact that there is some arson in Greece to n not worry about... Well, every, but, every major fire. So, so let, let's take um, an organisation that's not a kind of... You know, it's not pushing an alarmist agenda, it, it, or as you, you might call it, Zurich, an insurance agency an insurance company, think, uh, has a projection that by mid-century, in 25 years' time, there will be a billion people displaced from where they live. You don't think an insurance company might have an agenda to make people take out insurance against well, fire? Well, each, each year, for the last few years, the number of people displaced globally is increasing. This year is the largest year on record, 110 million. That's driving flows of refugees. There are causes to these things. And to just say, oh, no, this little isolated thing over here, you can't change the fact that, for example, in yeah. March last year, it was 30 degrees in both the North and the South Pole, that the scale of, uh, of melting of the, uh, the Greenland uh, ice sheet or the West Antarctic ice sheet is okay, we're, extremely we're gonna, worrying. OK, it came out actually this week that, it, that, that about 400,000 years ago, Greenland ha was completely ice-free. Of so course pr it was. Pr proving that the, this whole yes. thing is cyclical. Alex, I, I, wor you. I worry that this conversation um, is basically on tram lines, where people are pursuing paths that don't actually intersect to the point of being a useful conversation. Part of that reason, may I say, is that you're being reasonable. Uh, because some people look at this and, and say, look, I see fire, therefore this must be because of climate change. That's not a fallacy that you rightly have you've avoided, you've not a fallacy you've fallen into. But it's so easy to look at these fires on our television screens and say, you know, with, with your teenage eyes filled with tears and say, um, the world is on fire because of climate change. That at least is not the case. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad that there are at least some channels willing to have that discussion.